Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets with your boy Road Dog here. And of course, the man that is the legend at the top of the mountain, the hill it's hard to determine, Mr. King Carl Bryan. Yo ho ho, Road Dog. How are you, my brother? I'm good, man, but I got to start right out of the gates with a very important question for you. Okay, man. And good. that is, I was driving by the other day, and I saw you were walking around on your, mm-hmm. by your pool deck there, and my initial thought was, are those new sweatpants? <laughs> they are, man. See, you're, you're fine. Dude, you know I'm a very fashionable guy, man. You know, I'm, I'm always dressed up. So, yeah, sweat, sweatpants and, sweat and loafers, you folks. You know, like the, the loafers that your grandpa wears, Carl is making it, it a comeback. They, buddy, they are. Don't don't pretend they're not sexy. And those <laughs> I do, I literally have like five pairs of the exact same Ugg slippers. And I know they look like heck, but I love them. My wife hates them. I love them. And I got five pairs of them. So I can never be without them. So there you go, the big shoots. There you go. Well, anyways, so I just want to start on a bit of a, a light note there because um, obviously with recent events, um, especially with the um, you know the George Floyd um, stuff that's happened uh, in in the United States, um, obviously very somber. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if we want to uh, address anything there, Carl. Is there something that um, perhaps you want to start off with there? Uh, yes and no. It's a rabbit hole. Not a lot. You, look, it's a horrific situation. My heart goes out to everybody involved, specifically George Floyd. Like, my gosh, that, that footage is just blow your mind. Um, but I would say this, my, you know, and you read my emails. I said this not long ago, and I say something similar with reasonable consistency. But one of the things I like to do is see the entire playing field. And when I look at the entire playing field, um, you know, the enemy, you, our enemy is not one another. The enemy is the jerk offs behind the curtain that are pulling our puppet strings. Yours, mine, theirs, everybody's. That's, you know, dividing us by race, religion, color, um, et cetera. That's who I'm, you know, that there's where my frustration lies. But that being said, road dog, rabbit, rabbit hole, I don't think, I don't even want to go down because, quite frankly, there's not a lot that you can say where you're not going to, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a difficult one. My heart goes out like everybody's does, but to see what's happening recently and the riots and everything else, and bricks showing up for, you know, magically on these, I don't know. I, I just think it's horrific, man. And, uh, but life cannot be replaced. Um, you know, property and whatnot can be, but it's, uh, it's crazy, bro. But, but that's all I'm going to say about that, man. But the dickheads pulling the, uh, the puppet strings, this is who I'm looking to. So. The, the only thing, just to kind of to, to, to pivot it back to, um, you know, our topic here in Business Coaching Secrets, it's, I, I also, like, obviously, the, the, beyond the, the big tragedy and everything else, when you see these images of these business owners trying to defend their businesses, like, the, you know, they're coming out of a quarantine situation. Um, they are, they're barely hanging on to begin with, and now this is happening. Um, I understand that something needs to change, but I, I just, myself, I have a hard time watching business owners literally getting beaten, um, trying to defend their business. But, um, so folks, you know, as coaches, um, just to take a, you know, from our perspective as an industry, no, I don't think there's been a greater time in, in the history for us to really step up as coaches and, and actually make a huge impact, um, and, uh, and be that, be the beacon, be the light right now for people and give them hope. Because that's, I think, what people ultimately need is hope. So, so with Green that, man, I, I five, brother. There you go, man. Let's move on. Shall we? Uh, 
shall we dive in here? Um, and uh, all right, let's do that. So first question is this very appropriate for a man that is a celebrity himself. Um, the question is, I've heard you say celebrity is the ultimate hack, and then recently to be wary of celebrity. Can you explain, Mr. <laughs> wannabe contestant on America's Got Talent, Carl Ryan? Yeah, there you go. Look, people are listening. I better be careful what I say here. Um, no, no. Okay, so what would I say there? So, so I've explained that celebrity is the ultimate hack, but then I've said be wary of it. So, okay, you. Okay, let's make sure we're talking apples to apples. You as a celebrity, like building, when I say celebrity, let's just make sure that we're being realistic here. We're not trying to turn you into Howard Stern, which, by the way, if that's what you want to do, then, you know, have at her. Um, but celebrity in you is great. Celebrity in others, not so great. In fact, maybe actually I might explain this um, differently um, that might provide some value here. But like, see, here, here's a great lesson in business models. Um, Sig, what is it? Siegfried and Roy? Um, recently, actually, one of them passed away there. But look, they made, again, I don't know what the numbers are. But let's call it $100 million a year with their Vegas show, okay? And everybody wanted to go see them and their magic, okay? Well, down the road and about, I don't know, I'm going to say five, ten years later, an act came along called the Blue Man Group, okay? Well, Siegfried and Roy are doing, you know, roughly $100 million. Um, Blue Man Group managed to do, you know, three times that. But the X factor and the amazing bit is the Blue Man Group were sitting on the couch while it was happening, and Siegfried and Roy were living in Vegas on stage every night, you know, five nights a week, et cetera. What is the difference? The Blue Man Group, they're a bunch of, you know, a bunch of guys roughly the height 5'10", and they all painted their faces blue. Well, when they were no longer wanting to do the show, they brought in five other guys, painted them blue, and who would have known? And the answer is nobody. Think about the business model. And then they had um, acts running simultaneously around the world at the same time, right? See how, so celebrity, and, and by the way, Cirque du Soleil, which by the way is a great business study. I should talk maybe a little more in depth at that um, at a later stage. But Cirque du Soleil did the same thing where they, they took away the celebrity factor um, and basically just turned it, you know what I mean? Like the, the performance was the celebrity, I guess, was the show not individuals, not a specific elephant or a specific, you know, guy standing on stage. Um, so that's not a, um, you know, I, I think that's power. In fact, if you watch the UFC, right, Road Dog, you're a big fan. The UFC, who sits in front, who sits in the middle of the fighters every time they're interviewed, no matter where they're interviewed? And the answer would be Dana White. And if you've ever wondered, well, why is he there? I got to tell you, believe me, that is strategic. Um, and quite frankly, ingenious in terms of a strategy, but he wants to make sure that these guys don't become, you know, the Mike Tyson. If you if the, the money that Mike Tyson used to get paid and whatnot, well, there's a big reason he was the draw. Well, with UFC, Dana White, to a large degree, is the draw. Um, so, so the bottom line, though, I want to make sure. So, celebrity, I just like in personally. In fact, I think I said this maybe on the last podcast, or certainly recently in the podcast. Like celebrity, I just spending exactly zero time sitting here thinking about how I can, you know, get my name out there. What I'm really spend all my time do is thinking how can I go get as much value out there as possible. And I think that there's an element of popularity that comes with that when people are listening to your stuff and they're getting value. They start following you and forwarding your emails or your podcast or whatever. I think that happens, but I would highly encourage you to be careful with that. Like when I, when I see somebody come to me and they're like, you know, the number one bestseller, yeti, 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 a red flag goes up for me immediately. Like if they're spending all their time, um, you know, building up quote unquote, their celebrity. Well, logic tells me, right. That, they got two arms and two legs and 24 hours in a day. If they're spending too much time building up their celebrity, that means that they're not building up their value. And let me tell you that there's 10 times I'd be spending, you know, 10 times, if not a hundred times as much time, you know, building up the value that you're bringing the marketplace than, you know, how popular you are. So I, I, again, be wary of it. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration. I just spend exactly zero time. Celebrity is just what ends up happening. So, I think that's what we're talking about there, guys, is that, um, you know, when someone's got too much celebrity factor to them, I think that's, again, I would be a red flag if I were you. 
um, with that one, but really just make sure you're spending your time building up your value. And ultimately, it needs to be your value. So if you've got a staff member and you're pumping their tires or you've got, you know, a, um, what would it be like a joint venture partner and it's all about them, 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 and you're promoting them, but what happens when they walk away? right? A little bit of a challenge. So so that's where I think the wariness comes into it. But think about the Siegfried and Roy and then Blue Man Group. I think the power of that is absolutely unbelievable. How is your clients going about building their business? How are you personally going about building your business? And um, a replicatable model can be a heck of a lot more profitable and create a uh, you know an environment where you be able to walk away from your company and sell it one day. So, so that's what I'd say to that there, Road Dog. So in a Siegfried and Roy relationship, which one of us is Siegfried and which one of us is not Roy? <laughs> like, I'm curious. To, like, if you I walk away, you know, but... I'm here to build and pump your tires up. What happens if you leave? Like, you're going to, like, this is it? Like, we got to sort this stuff yourself, out. Bro. These are questions that I'm sure no one is asking, but... Um... <laughs> yes, I would agree with that. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we talked about tracking a little bit in terms of metrics and stuff, and we had a follow-up question to that. Um, again, what, just to clarify, metrics inside of a coaching business. Okay, so uh, we discussed that I think a couple of episodes ago. But the follow-up question that we received was, "What advanced metrics should I be tracking for my coaching business?" Do you have any sort of further um, insights into that, Carl? Okay, well, I just, I'd be cautious with this one. I think as soon as somebody's thinking advanced, there's possibly, I mean, why do you want to get advanced, right? At the end of the day, how many sales at the end of the day, week, month is really going to tell you everything. I think that people start, you know, they, they confuse being busy with being successful, which is something you've got to avoid, like the plague. Um, so really the ultimate stats are the simplest stats. Um, in fact, let me tell you a huge, um, so Amazon, if this isn't their number one metric, um, it's it's top three all day long. I remember hearing this and I was like, wow. But basically, um, number of support tickets per order, that is the key metric of Amazon. And then think about that because if you, you understand Amazon, and I again, I've spent a lot of time understanding Jeff Bezos, getting inside his head, understanding the Amazon model, which I've got to tell you, that man is to say that he is an intelligent operator. I mean, I know it goes without saying now, but he's, you know, going to be a trillionaire soon. Uh, but, you know, 10, 20 years ago, he was equally as clever, but just no one was giving me any credit, giving him any credit for it, um, or as much as what he gets today and frankly deserves. Uh, but why is that such an important metric? Well, they are the most, you know, they, call, they often talk about, you know, being the most customer-centric business on the planet. Um, and totally obsessed with customer service. Well, a raving fan doesn't su- doesn't send a support ticket. Think about that, right? So if there is a support ticket, that means that something has gone haywire, or something's gone wrong, or something wasn't a hundred percent clear. And if they are the most customer centric business in the world, they need to rectify that. And I think that the power of that is absolutely insane. So you could go to that and say that's an advanced metric. But frankly, in my world, I believe that that's the most basic of the basic. But the fact that they elevate it to like number one or very close to, I think power of that is insane. Um, But look, here are, as a business coach, in fact, with your clients, it would be the same. Um, But really, the, um, the like five statistics that are be really important are the number of clients, right? So um, units of sale, conversions, the number of people you're talking to to get conversions, um, the um, the unit of sale, like how much are you selling? Okay, so like are you, you know, $1,000 a month or are you $2,000 a month? The next one that I would be measuring would be the number of sales. So just like you take on a client and you're selling them $2,000 a month coaching. Okay, well, if their website sucks, you should be the one organizing to get their website revamped, updated, etc. cetera. Um, if their website needs some copywriting, I would be selling them the copywriting and I'd have a back, you know, a copywriter in my back pocket. Um, I would have, um, you know, like they need social media assistance. I'd be lining that up for them. Um, they want to start doing some advertising. I would now this one depended upon the relationship there, but you might want to be exploring um, where 
um, you know, where you're going to help them advertise and whatnot, have a, you know, a back end deal with somebody to say that, look, this is where we're going to be marketing. And, you know, like a digital marketer could coordinate all of that. You're getting a piece of the pie. Um, so I'd be concentrating on that metric. And then also the last one is profit margins. And by the way, if you don't know this, one of the main reasons that you want to be a consultant coach is that our profit margins are just through the roof. I mean, you can operate, there's not many businesses in the world that you can operate with like a 70, 80% margin, um, and coaching would be one of them. Of course, it depends on exactly what you want to factor into that, right? How much value you're going to put on your time. Uh, but the bottom line is that the margins that you have in consulting um, are, you know, very difficult to find in any business around the world. So, so those are the, um, the metrics, man, that I would be, um, that I'd be looking at. But basically you got, you know, number, in fact, I, I started with sales, leads, conversions, transactions, pricing, um, profits. Those would be the five. But ultimately, don't confuse being busy with being successful and the number of sales is absolutely huge. In fact, just last week, I sent out a, uh, an email where I was talking about a world, world record week, which is what I believe everybody should have. Um, and all you do, like literally, um, what I would have is, so just go, you get a whiteboard in your office. I think everybody should have one of those, by the way. And then a tracking, you've just got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? And then you've got, you know, four weeks of the month. And then every day you put the number of sales, and these are coaching sales, and let's presume at, you know, one to $2,000 a month, the number of coaching sales you got that day. And part of the X factor is that you got to put a zero. On the day that you get zero sales, you got to put a zero, okay? And then the day that you get one sale, you put one sale, right? Boom. And that that little metric alone and frankly that activity which is significantly more important than the metric if you have any kind of competitive personality whatsoever or an alpha kind of personality writing a zero in you know under monday and then tuesday and then wednesday it's going to drive you nuts so what will happen is more often than not and then you have a total for the week and then you get a total for the month like it's so straightforward it's insane right well then you create a world record week and in fact you should have a world record month for the number of sales. And then if you want to get funky, you can put the amount. So let's say that your your coaching client is two grand a month. So that's going to be 24,000, right? So then you put 24,000 in the box. And if you're a thousand a month, then you put $12,000 in the box. And now you could also do totals. And quite frankly, I believe that those, like that tracking right there, because what happens is folks, all of a sudden they want to do all of you know, these events and whatnot. Well, I'd rather do less events and have high conversions than have lots of events and low conversion, right? Like we have a, a program called Live Event Mastery that is frankly bulletproof and there is no better program in the world for a business coach to basically run live events. I don't believe it's absolutely, like I said, I've, I've personally filled and run over 400 local live events. If I started again, it is exactly what I would do is I would follow Live Event Mastery but the bottom line in the X factor is that we encourage you, like, you only, like, 10 people is a lot of people to put in that room. And the question is why? Because I'd rather ha you have less people and good follow-up than more people and poor follow-up. And I, I don't need to spend any time with you to know that if you put 25 people in a room on a Tuesday, you are going to battle to follow up with all 25 properly. You just are. you got two arms and two legs. There's going to be appointments that are going to follow. There's going to be coaching clients that are going to follow. There's going to be just, you know, other stuff that you've got to get. Plus, you've got your own life that you want to live. Um, significantly better off to create a smaller room um, and have, like, less people, better follow-up than, than the other. So where does that come from? It's just confusing being busy with being successful, right? You just – the metric that you want to follow is number of coaching sales. And then the retention of those sales is another another metric that you need to be um, following. Because the real question is you can get the clients. Are you – are you holding on to them? So, so basically that leads, conversions, transactions, pricing, profits, those metrics would get it done. Um, but I would be very cautious with somebody asking for advanced stats because quite frankly, I just, I don't think that that is a, uh, I think that's going to be pulling you further away from what you actually need. It's a pretty easy, one of the reasons coaching is so great and consulting is so great. It's a simple business to run right? The, the metrics don't need to be flashy. So, so that's what I'd answer there, but there you go. Awesome. I'd, I'd love to pivot this into a hockey conversation of, of tracking stats there, but there's no tracks, not, no tracking, no stats, stats to track at this moment. Um, but with that in mind, 
um, and to pivot. Now, obviously, the question here that we've got is my clients are pretty pretty much all triggered by the long tail effects of the pandemic. And I, we can now further expand that to everything else that's going on. Um, any advice to get them back on track to stop focusing on the negativity of the situation? I think this is a one yeah. hell of a question right now, Carl. And how would you get your clients because again, negativity, no matter where you look right now, there, there is, and it's, it draws you in, right? So how do you get your clients to just focus on what they know they need to be doing? Okay, um, yeah, I'd agree, Road Dog, great question. Um, you, you gotta, like, this is not, okay, whenever you see something as an end, and there's your challenge, like if they're seeing it as an end, there's gonna be a bad result. You've gotta see this as a transformation. And then I'd encourage you again, you always have to keep things in context. And it's remember, remember 2008 happened and we thought it was the absolute end of the world. And oh my gosh, and this, that. And I, I personally firmly took a punch straight in the mouth in 2008, right? So, so I understand it. But at the time it felt that then you look at this and you're like, oh my gosh, give me back 2008. Well, well, something else is going to come along and you'd be like, oh my God, please bring me back to 2020. It's, you got to keep things in context and believe me, it's, you know, not, you know, it, it is, it's a pain in the butt and there's, there's going to be a, you know, a bumpy road for 12 months. Um, but you just got to make sure that you're seeing this. So don't see it as an end, see it as a transformation. That's what I'm talking to our folks about. It's not an end. It's a transformation. There's, there's just as many things ending as things starting, right? Like, you know, the, the restaurant could look at it like, oh my gosh, it's a nightmare. But there is all of a sudden a lot of people available out there that were never available for. But I said that recently on a podcast where, you know, like we talk about bad times where real estate goes on sale and then stocks go on sale and you should be taking advantage of them. And by the way, for anybody listening, my opinion, which I have expressed uh, multiple times, like real estate is an example. You know, should I be buying? Like now is not the time to be buying real estate. Twelve months to 18 months will be the time to buy real estate. The sale has not started there. Um, I also don't believe that the sale is ready on stocks and I could be wrong there and I'm happy to be, uh, but I don't like what will happen normally with stocks is they come back and then they make a jump and everybody jumps on and goes, Woohoo, we're out of trouble. We get the gum. And then there's another drop. And I believe that that drop well and truly has not been here. And then you'll find about 18 months post the second drop is when real estate will go. But Bottom line, it isn't about real estate and stocks. It's like in business, um, you're going to have real estate and stocks for sale, and that's the time that you should be buying them. Well, people are on sale as well. And that's not to be harsh and whatnot. It's just that there's really qual you know, qualified and talented people that are available right now that weren't available three months ago because they were tied up and they were you know, happy with their job and working X, Y, Z. So you should be looking at that. And ultimately, if you want to build a really successful company, you need to build it with A players. You don't, like, what do they say? Like, A's hire B's, B's hire C and C's, and then C's hire D's. That's a huge problem in business. You need to reverse that where, you know, C's need to be hiring B's at a minimum, and A's need to be hiring masters. Like, you've, you've got to hire people more intelligent than yourself is fundamentally what I'm getting at there. And most people you will find to their default is they go to hiring people, you know, slightly lesser than them. I think the reasons for that are probably pretty obvious, but this is not a, um, you know, that's not the ideal situation. In fact, for coaching, put that in context, what I find is a lot of coaches, they feel very intimidated. Like when they see a business owner that's got like a PhD, or they sit down with a business owner that's highly analytical, and they've, you know, got a couple of degrees, and maybe they've been to Harvard or MIT or wherever, well, this, you feel like, oh my gosh, this person will never hire me because they're more intelligent than I am, right? It's a horrific way of looking at it. And you definitely, that is in your head big time. Uh, but the bottom line is you build companies by bringing on talented people. There's a more talented people available right now than ever. Uh, but more to the point to answer this question, um, during a pandemic, how would I stop the negativity? When in any given moment, there is three things that people do. They got focus, and then there's meaning they attach to the focus, um, and then the, what they do. So just three words, focus, meaning, do. And whenever we do live events, like we do a live event every year, Business Coaching Mastery, which, by the way, if you ever get the chance to attend, you should absolutely do that. But we have Business Coaching Mastery, 
Um, and then like, I've got signs all around the room, you know, for different things that I want people to take away. Well, one of those signs says focus meaning do. In fact, Road Dog, I think you actually, when we sat down, you actually mentioned you had that written down in your notes. I remember we were having a beer and you were like, I got this focus meaning do. And you and I had a, a conversation around what that meant and some of the, I don't know what it was, but you know, a, you know, something that you took away from those three words and went, holy smokes. But real quick, what I'll do is, here it is, guys. In fact, Tony, and this is Tony Robbins 101, right? So you love Tony Robbins, you don't love Tony Robbins, really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you know, from a personal personal development standpoint, I mean, the guy's material is magic, the end. Um, so here's, here's what he says. So focus meaning do, um, and if you ever see Tony Robbins talk for any period of time, he always says this story. But basically, he was 11 years old, it was Thanksgiving, a guy knocks on the door, and he hands him, you know, a bunch of food. And young Tony's there going, oh, wow, cool, it's food, right? Well, his dad came up and went, what the hell is this? Rah, 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 rah. His dad focused on, um, this is charity. What's the meaning? I'm a loser. What am I going to do? I'm going to leave my family. He walked out and Tony Robbins never saw him again. So the focus meaning do, that's what his, his father took from it. Well, what did young Tony take from it? Focus while there's food. The meaning strangers care. What did I do? Well, if you know anything about Tony Robbins, he's fed more children in need than possibly any other human on planet Earth right? Well, that's what he took. Focus meaning do. So with your coaching clients, with yourself, what are you going to focus on? Positive or negative? Clearly positive over negative. Fo focus on the transformation that's upon us ver where a lot of people are going to become very, very rich. We're going to look back in 10 years and these companies are being launched right now um, and some of these, it's, in some cases, it's just normal businesses that are hiring absolute superstars that weren't otherwise available because of the transformation who are going to crush it. So what are you focusing on? The end or the transformation? Clearly the transformation, the positive versus the negative. What is the meaning that you're going to associate with the transformation? Well, the meaning is that there is more opportunity available right now. So there's an opportunity for me to go virtual with my business where in the past, I just didn't quite get my head around it. I was now pushed into a position where I've got to do it. So the meaning is that opportunities are significantly more plentiful for me as a result of the meaning. And what am I going to do? I'm going to action it because it's a whole, you know, it's one thing to, to know this stuff, but to do it is totally different. Like an example that I give you there is everybody tells me how they know what compound interest is. But the reality is they don't have it working in their favor. So my belief is that if you know something, like you don't know something if you don't do something. The end. Same with 80-20 rules. Talk about those all the time, right? But people say, oh, yeah, I get 80-20. I know time management. I know goals. Well, if you know goals, open up your wallet and let me see them. If you know time management and 80-20, tell me exactly what 1% of your activity derives 50% of the productivity in your business or what 1% of your you know, your um, clients provide 50% of the revenue of your business, the same for your clients, right? And of course, they can't do that, right? So it's knowing and doing two totally different things. Got to be able to do it. And then you, and then do it, right? Like actually take action and go. Get out of your own way. Have a crack. Screw it up. See what happens. Bottom line, um, you know, just one foot in front of the other and don't expect miracles. If you want to lose some weight, Put on your running shoes and go for a walk, right? Don't plan, you know, the greatest diet and the keto diet and the this, that, and the other. Just do, right? It's like, you know, some people want to get pumped up for business and they watch the movie Boiler Room or Wall Street or uh, The Wolf of Wall Street, whatever. I say, well, no, get a pen and a paper, get a spreadsheet and write down 100 clients and businesses that you're going to chase this week. You'll be significantly better off by doing that than you will by, you know, by watching the movie, The Boiler Room. And by the way, you want to watch the movie Boiler Room and you want to take two hours and chill out and, you know, end up a little bit motivated. And that's fantastic. But make sure that, you know, you understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish here. And there is no doubt that activity, as in focus, meaning do, the do part, um, you know, some activity in that area is going to get you significantly farther um, than, you know, motivational and listening to Tony Robbins and whatever else. I think that there's a place for both but the activity will lead to more activity. So, so that's the answer to that, man. Focus meaning do. Um, very, very powerful. And I think that uh, people should spend some time helping their clients um, with those three words and, you know, what they're following through on with them. And um, also doing this in, their, this in their, our own world with our own coaching businesses, Road Dog. So that's so, what I think, bud. 
So I also think that um, you're you, yes, there, there's a point to limiting the amount of stuff that you take in to pump you up, with the exception to this podcast. This <laughs> oh, yeah, they couldn't listen. You could not listen to enough. <laughs> Road Dog and King Carl. This is official. I agree with that, man. I agree with so that. So you, you mentioned hiring up, right? C's hire B's. It just reminded me of a t-shirt that I, I saw once and I absolutely love, which is the story of my educational um, uh, career, if you will. C's get degrees. I love it. C's, <laughs> C's get, get degrees. Yeah. There we that's go. it, man. Well, you mentioned about a lot about movement and um, in that as well, and it's it kind of that bleeds into this next question a little bit here. And this is a business coach writing. Just said, I just moved to a new city where I have no network, and I'm not sure where to start. Do you have any ideas for me? Ooh, somebody just moved to a new city. Um, There's going to be a lot more of that. that What's that? There's going to be a lot more of that happening. I think. Yeah, there most definitely is. There is. Um, okay, so. Yeah, okay, I would look at this from very different. In fact, I'll just tell you my own story. So I was building a very successful business coaching company. I was in Australia, um, and I moved to Canada. And, well, first I wanted to be able to try and, you know, conquer. I had this idea in my head, being able to conquer the U.S., to do, to do, to do, you know, because I was really flying. It was working well. Um, I moved to Canada, and I'm, you would have assumed that I got here, and it would be, you know, to Canada, and it would have been super, you know, challenging, this, that, and the other. The reality is it was one of the greatest gifts. So I would... I would challenge you to say that moving is like a massive hack um, versus the opposite. In fact, okay, two holes will go down here. One is that like what I've personally done. So I, I remember building, buying a house one time at Notion View in Vancouver, very you know expensive city. Um, could I afford it? Could I not afford it? You know, highly debatable. But I can tell you this: that you know, as a you know, a house with a million dollar price tag with an ocean view, I was a pretty young guy, and I got to tell you, I have never worked so hard in my life than when I had, you know, bought that house in the next six months. I mean, I went to work and I, uh, and frankly, I crushed it. I did some great stuff, right? So I kind of pushed myself there. Same thing when I bought a sports car, quote unquote, you know, convertible that, you know, could I afford it? Could I not afford it? You know, it's kind of the end of the day, you live in Canada and you own a convertible car. It's basically in my dad's world, it's a toy, right? He said, once you buy a toy that is worth that much money, um, you go into a different level kid. And I was like, okay, fair enough, right? Because again, you, you can hardly drive the thing. Uh, but you, but the bottom line is I did it good, bad, and different. Um, you know, but it kicked me into gear and I started working a little bit harder because all of a sudden I just bought this car and I thought, you know, that guys who drove those kind of cars worked a little bit harder. I then bought another house um, that, you know, again, pretty expensive and beautiful view, this, that, and the other. And again, I have never, so I had, you know, I broke my record of working so hard previous to that. So the bottom line is I believe that it can be a hack from that standpoint where don't be shy to kind of put yourself out there a little bit and kind of push the envelope whilst being responsible. I don't want any, you know, don't go buy a million dollar house if you, you know, should be buying, a, if you're pressed to buy a $500,000 house, that would be really stupid, right? That would be a terrific idea. Uh, but that being said, I believe that pushing the envelope and you need to understand yourself and I'm kind of hardwired and, you know, I don't muck around. So I knew that when I went and extended myself a little bit that I wasn't going to have a problem working a little bit harder or, you know, waking up a little bit earlier, pushing the envelope. So I, I believe that that's pretty cool, right? So you you move. Um, there can be that part of it. A better to answer this question is that, okay, so you've just moved. I believe that new is one of the, in fact, I don't believe, I know that being new is like a huge advantage. So by being new, but what you need to do is you need to totally immerse yourself, right? Like here's one of the challenges, like university kids, you'll see university kids that don't leave their towns. Okay. So they, they live in their house or their apartment or with their parents, whatever it is. And then they go to university um, or college in the same city and live in the same house and don't move. They do not immerse themselves the way the kids that move do. Okay. Um, so in other words, by moving. So what's the solution when you do move to go to a college? You don't know and you don't know anybody. So guess what? You've got to kind of immerse yourself and you've got to create a new community and you've got to create some new friends. And through those new friends and those new circles, you start, you know, mingling in and around, you know, you end up in and around the university crowd. I think that's probably pretty self-explanatory, but guys that don't move. In fact, uh, Dylan Dubé, Christian, right? You and I, so a young guy who, um, you know, plays in the NHL is chatting to him 
we were talking about how um, you know he 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 basically still like he lives in the same city as he plays in the NHL, right? And it's like when he moves from Calgary, like you know the city. Um, and he's going to be more immersed in the NHL than he is right now. It's it's a 101, good, bad, indifferent. Um, that's what's going to happen. So, so basically, by moving, I think it's a huge advantage if you immerse yourself entirely. Um, people love what is new, so I think you got to you got to use it as your um, to your advantage. But I would also question: Okay, what's your marketing message? What are you putting out there? When's your next event? Have you got your book done? Um, these types of things. I mean, if you have, you know, these kind of one-on-one and these fundamentals of marketing in place, you're going to be able to make a lot of noise. Like when I moved from Australia to Canada, right, like I'm, I've been sales, you know, in sales and marketing for a long time. I, I had my messages and whatnot crafted pretty well. So just imagine, you know, you're coming to a new city. You could say, hey, I'm a business coach and I help businesses go to the next level. And you'll pretty much hear crickets. Or you could show up in the city. If you worked with us, we would train you on how to find any business owner $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. Well, you show up to a new city and you start using that marketing message versus I help businesses go to the next level or other lame ones that the average business coach use. Well, probably not going to get anywhere. So, so answer, somebody has just moved. They don't really have a network. I say totally immerse yourself the way that a university student would totally immerse themselves moving from one town to another, or one city to another to go to school. And, um, and I think you could, you could really crush it. And what does immersing mean? Okay. Well, you got to go to the chamber events. You got to go to the BNI groups. You got to buy your membership to BNI. You got to buy your membership to the chamber. Like everybody wants to show up to these things, not spend any money and then get all the advantage. You're, you're talking about you know, hundreds of dollars, right? Like you've got to be willing, you, you know, you don't have to do anything, but I would be encouraging you to really immerse yourself in the community, right? And then make sure, and by the way, there's going to be some high for, you know, higher profile people. Uh, if you guys have heard me use the expression, you can sell through or you can sell to, okay, I'd be looking for people who I could sell through. What do I mean by that? There's a really popular accountant in town. And when he says good things about you, things are going to go well. Okay. Well, I'd be doing that. Um, I'd, I'd be, you know, helping that individual and I'd be connecting with him. Um, there's, there's the chamber of commerce, but then there's also the, you know, the chair of the chamber and somebody who's probably reasonably high profile and connected. Well, people love to help people. So when you're new and you tell them that you're new and that you're trying to immerse yourself in the community and who should I be connecting with and what event should I be going to? This person is going to want to help you at a high level, right? So that's what I mean by completely immerse yourself. And, and you might be a super high profile coach from another city. And now you feel like you're, you're down a couple rungs, right? Like you've got a, um, the way that you're presenting yourself needs to be, um, whether you are high, you know, whether you're a great business coach in another city or not, you need to show up like you really know what you're doing. You know, there's a level of mojo and a level of, you know, confidence in your voice and the way you hold yourself and the way you, you know, talk to folks that I think would be absolutely critical to making that happen. But the bottom line is new or, or maybe you're a business coach and you're just getting started. And you're like, gee, nobody knows me as a business coach and I haven't done anything. First of all, go help some people at no charge um, to get some practice and some runs on the board. But who are you helping? Are you helping a nobody or are you helping a higher profile client? I might start on a couple lower profile clients to make sure that you get your jam and you get good at this. But once I get good at it, I want to go help somebody high profile because that person can really help me get out there. So remember, don't just sell, th don't just sell to, sell through. So those are like joint ventures, the accountant, the chamber, um, the networking organization, the leaders of those, the well-networked individuals, the high-end accountants locally. Um, the other people that are going to these events, like when you go to these events, you're just going to see people cruising around that are significantly more comfortable in those environments. Well, use your spidey senses to accept, like, understand who those individuals are. Well, they're going to help you get further quicker. So, so yeah, I think um, Road Dog, that's the way to answer that. Just completely immerse yourself, but see it as an advantage, not a disadvantage. Um, and I think um, everybody wants to help people out. So provided it's presented in the right way. Don't be shy to ask, and um, you'll get there. So there you go.
You know, another thing that actually this uh, this hit me the other day, not not in regards to this is more in regards to you saying stretching yourself in terms of. And by the way, where in Vancouver are you buying an ocean view home for a million bucks these days? Um, yeah. Right. Not a reality. But um, no, just from the stretching yourself, like if anyone's looking to buy a new house for whatever reason, horrible timing, whatever. Um, I never considered the fact that especially more and more people working from home now. Have you ever considered the fact of what you would pay to rent an office and how much more house you could get if you applied that to your mortgage payment? Hundred percent. That's I would agree with that totally. That's you know, when you factor it in, I mean, just you know, buy a house where you've got, you know, a separate area where you can go in and you know, there could be a party going upstairs, but your office is separated, home run city, or even well, another business you want you talk about transformations and ends. Like a business that is absolutely going to take off um, is like think prefab offices in backyards, like that. And by the way, it doesn't need. When I say prefab, I just think scale automatically. You just go, you know, somebody could go and build really kick-ass offices in backyards and do really well. But prefab is something that you're going to be able to scale and uh, move. Like that business is going to be going, it's going to be going crazy. No question about it. So the favorite part of the show where we have to wrap up and clearly because rabbit holes exist and Carl loves walking down into them. I now get to pick one out of a series of questions here that, uh, so this one is, this one intrigues me quite a bit. So we'll wrap up on this. I can't wait to hear your final thoughts on this one, Carl, but how do you know what to believe with so much misinformation in coaching? Uh, nice open-ended question for you. I know, yeah, exactly. This could be. Okay, well, I think what, once you ask that question, I think you just had a breakthrough in itself because uh, I agree with you. So many people are full of poo-poo. It's absolutely crazy. Um, so I think that whole – look, who is going to be more inclined um, to feed you full of some poo-poo? I would say that we talked about it earlier like that. You know, the best-selling author comes, celebrity come, you know, somebody's spending significantly too much time to promote themselves versus, you know, making sure that they're providing massive value for their clients. And by the way, that's a very, you know, that is a, um, you know, this this is not a black and white statement. These things are just kind of out there, right? But um, but the bottom line is I, I just be very, like, just always be cautious of what people are saying and then be thinking like, like, think, you know, it's like second, third order consequences. Like, think of where is this information coming from? What is this person's, um, you know, perspective? And if you look a little bit further, you know what I mean? If you look three levels past them, you might see that, well, they are, you know what I mean? They've got a slanted viewpoint, so they might not be filling you, feeding you full of poo-poo. It's just that their standpoint must be um, significantly, um, you know, like, let me give you an example. A guy who sells Facebook ads for a living, what do you think he's going to try and convince you to do? And that's by Facebook ads. Well, if you know anything about Facebook ads, you know that 60% of the time um, running a Facebook ad is not a bad idea. It's the worst horrific idea ever, right? Like if you have a cash, like people have cash flow problems and then they try solve them by buying Facebook ads, right? Like there's a lot of stupid things you could do. That's amongst the stupidest, right? Like if you have a cash flow problem at 500,000, you're going to have a significantly bigger cash flow problem at a million dollars if you don't plug the holes in the boat. So you got to make sure that you do that. Um, you know, how does a guy like Bernie Madoff, right? Like how the heck does he pull off what he pulled off? And it really comes back to social proof. So social proof is magic, but it also puts, I think, like blinders on, like the story of Bernie Madoff. And not that I know it, you know, super well, but I got a pretty damn good idea. Um, and, and really what happened is early on, he managed to get a bank. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to assume it was like the Bank of America, one of the, the bigger names. But he got a Bank of America on board with him. Right. Well, when he had Bank of America, then he went to another bank. And then, of course, they're thinking, well, geez, if the Bank of America are in surely they did their due diligence so we don't need to do that much due diligence so we might as well sign up as well and wow he's got these amazing numbers and then once you've got the bank of america and then let's call it Citibank on board what do you think the third one says even at a higher level surely he wouldn't have pulled the blinders over two banks right so the next one jumps on board and then you're just some guy that you know has a you know a lazy million lying around and you're thinking well 
if Citibank invests in this guy and Bank of America Bank, you know, invest in this guy, plus these other celebrities, right, that rip around the neighborhood in Lamborghinis and whatnot, surely my million dollars is going to be safe. And that's, that's how it gets there. So nobody really asking those questions and looking a little bit further. And yeah, social proof can be wonderful, but it's more wonderful for the person that's providing it than the person that's buying as a result of the social proof, right? Like even not long ago, the Bitcoin craze, right? Like it was all the rage and it might be legit. It might be this, it might be that. But I mean, at the end of the day, all you need to do is like warn, if you are thinking about investing in Bitcoin, and then you don't take the time to go and listen to what Warren Buffett might have to say about Bitcoin, like this has got to be a horrific error, right? Well, I can tell you, no need to go look it up. I can tell you that Warren Buffett has not invested five cents in Bitcoin, not going to, and he's not sold in any way, right? So so ultimately, um, you know, it's just those fundamentals. I, I just think you got to, you know, just be a little bit wary of who's in, you know, who's information, um, you know, what is the behind the curtain of the person that's giving the information, what might be their ulterior motive, not necessarily in a destructive way, in an intentional destructive way, destructive way, but just generally speaking, right? Like be asking that. And then also be careful with the social proof, right? If you find yourself making a decision, well, everybody else is jumping on board. So shit, I might as well jump on board too. Look, things are probably, you know, not going to go that well. But I think also, Road Dog, if somebody's asking this question, really what they're looking for is a roadmap to build a successful business coaching company, and they're concerned that they're going to be getting you know, poor advice. Well, the best advice is always the simplest advice, just like the metrics. You know, The best metrics are always the most basic metrics, and you should you know, challenge yourself to get too far away from the absolute basics, and when you do, you're in trouble. Um, and I would just say this, that a business coach, if you charge two grand a month, you need 10 clients to make $240,000 a year, right? Those are your numbers. And for most business coaches at 240, and again, we have huge margins in this space, which makes it, you know, part of why it's so attractive, um, then you're doing pretty well. Okay. So how do you need to do that? I just tell you, first of all, if you're trying to get $2,000 coaching clients and then you suck at sales, oh, you not suck as a coach. If you suck as a coach, do not charge two grand a month because what you'll do is you'll you'll hurt the industry, right? If you're a new coach, just start at a lower amount and accept that you've got to learn with your client. But presuming you're a good coach and you just suck at sales, all you got to do is scale your pricing. Like from two, like you you don't. If you suck at selling, the mistake that coaches make is instead of being two thousand dollars a month, you go back to one thousand dollars a month. Okay, well, that's just the dumbest thing you could ever do because you just turned a $24,000 client into a $12,000 client because you suck at the first sale, right? Well, here's what you do. You scale your pricing 500, 1,000, 1,500, and then 2,000. And by the way, make it 1997, not 2,000. You will always increase your conversions by putting a seven on the end. But anyway, so you're, you're 1997 now but you just got to wait four months to get to two grand, but that's fine. And then by the way, your coaching client's probably going to have a win in those first few months. So, you know, this is good for your long-term relationship. So there's, you need clients like, so so you just, you got $2,000 a month clients. So that's 240 grand if you get 10 of them. And all you've got to do is commit to speak to, this isn't voicemail messages and they'll call you back and they weren't available. You need to speak to 10 business owners every single day for 12 months, okay, which by the way is going to be incredibly challenging once you get going and you actually get coaching clients. But if you want to, you know, make 200 grand a year as a business coach, these are the kinds of things you got to, I really say 90 days, you'd be off to the races, but I want to make sure that I've got the fundamental soundly in place here for the advice. So don't worry about the flashy advice and the Facebook ads and everything else. As a business coach, like as a business coach, you can only really take on 20 clients anyway. So why would you be doing Facebook ads? You really don't need to do Facebook ads at all. You might want to help your clients do them. But the bottom line, the fundamentals, you pick up the And how do you pick up the phone? You don't have to make cold calls. You can send out the LinkedIn messages and the Facebook messages and connect with people and find a way, get good at taking people um, you know, from comments on social media to a private message to a phone call. But all this takes time and you need to understand your goal is to get 10 business owners on the phone per day. You do that for 12 months. It is literally impossible, impossible. The only problem.
problem you'll have is follow, like actually following through on that because you'll get too busy. But you just got to get – it is impossible for you not to make over $100,000 a year if you commit to that. But the problem is everybody gets – everything in their way, right? The dog shits on the carpet and suddenly it's some kind of a big deal and you need to address it before the meeting or before the this. And you just, all you got to do is just move everything out of the way and just 100% commit to making those 10, speaking to 10 people a day. And the way that you get the 10 phone calls and the way that I get the 10 phone calls, the way I would do it is I would just pick up the phone and literally cold call. I would have no, you know, humility is a superpower. I am not too big and I am not too, you know, you know, wobble, you know what I mean? My, you know, like, oh, it's going to hurt. You know, I, you know, worrying about all this, you know, your own personal self-confidence and everything else and people hanging up on you and telling you F off or whatever. I would just literally pick up the phone, phone people every single day. And again, I would commit to doing that for 12 months. And I guarantee, I mean, I wouldn't make a hundred grand a year. I would make many, many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. But the difference between me and the other coaches, right? And I don't mean to elevate myself in any way. I just, what I will elevate is my work ethic because there's nothing that would get in the way and I would crush it. So I just want to make sure Road Dog, in the spirit of making sure that I'm and some, somebody's asking about some misinformation. I can only assume that the misinformation is in and around, you know, marketing and getting clients and everything else. Um, that's the solution. Just come back to the fundamentals. You don't need this podcast. You don't need the training, you just need to pick up the phone and be absolutely dogmatic um, with contacting folks. So so that's it, man. I don't know. That's Be careful of the social proof, though, in the interest of the question. Uh, that's what got Bernie Madoff going and all the everybody, you know, billions of dollars lit on fire. Um, be careful with that one. So did I answer that well, Road Dog? Anything you'd yeah, add there, bud? It's um... – you talk about misinformation. I actually wrote a, a social post about the biggest conspiracy theory on the planet. And it's the one that we have internally, thinking that we don't know it, what we need to do. We don't have the answers and we're always looking outside of ourselves. And I think yeah. that's probably the biggest one. The, the answers that you're looking for are a lot simpler. That's not really a yeah. word, but it's a lot more simple than, than we make it out to be. And I think that's uh, sort of in line with where you're going with that, right? It's just, you know what you need to do. Just go ahead and get that done and, and believe that you can actually do it. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest piece. Would you agree with that, Carl? Totally, dude. It's just it's a million times more simple than most people make it. The end. That's it. There it so, is. So this information, there's lots of it, but uh, don't worry about it. Just go to the fundamentals and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Well, there it is. Well, speaking of misinformation, you won't catch that here, folks. And um, <laughs> And again... If uh, we want to thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode with Business Coaching Secrets with my boy, King Carl himself. And again, if you want more information on how to build your coaching company, you can visit focused.com. Again, that's focused.com. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please, please, please share with anyone that you think would benefit from it. And as well, be sure to rate it and give it as high of a star rating as you possibly can, as we all know that that's how... Um, the algorithms work when it comes to that sort of thing. So with that being said, everybody, I hope you um, stay safe and, um, and I hope that everybody has a fantastic week. And until next time, remember, progress equals happiness. Take care, everybody. Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.